Hello, this is the Lord's Legion, and welcome to the best films ever, the show in which I talk about a specific villain and talk about their backstories, abilities, greatest feats, and why I personally love them so much. And for the very delayed special episodes, in which was meant to come out around the same time as Spider-Man Homecoming, I have decided to do an episode on one of Spider-Man's arch nemesis, who often doesn't get the right respect that he deserves. The villain in question is of course Dr. Octopus. Now Otto Octavius did had a pretty troubled childhood because he was raised by an overprotective mother as well as an abusive father, both of which wanted Otto Octavius to achieve different things in life. However Otto's father ended up dead in a workplace accident, which led to Otto Octavius pushing himself even further so that he could achieve even more in life. Over time, Otto Octavius has achieved many things, such as getting a job with an engineering firm, becoming a nuclear physicist, a research consultant, and even became an inventor and lecturer. One of his great inventions is of course a chess harness, which connects the wearer to four mechanical arms, which would soon give him the iconic name of Dr. Octopus. During this time, Otto Octavius was romantically involved with a fellow researcher in the name of Mary Alice Anders, to which he eventually got engaged to. However, Otto's mother, being overprotective that she is, ended the happy couple, which led up to an aggressive argument which ended with his mother's death. Due to Otto Octavius losing both his mother and father as well as the love of his life, this led Otto on a very reckless path as one of his experiments literally backfired on his face as a radiation leak led to an explosion which infused Otto Octavius with the harness while the limbs were still intact. And at the same time, the radiation also caused a mutation in Otto's brain in which allowed him to have direct control over the arms through telepathy. And now that Otto Octavius lost his humanity as well as all his loved ones, he decided to take advantage of his newfound abilities and turn to the life of crime as Dr. Octopus. Looking back on this origin story, it seems very basic, but at the same time it seems so effective. On one hand it seems like just a basic mad scientist gone wrong incident, but at the same time there are some other layers on top of that. But specifically when it comes down to his upbringing with his parents as well as his tragic love life. And although the incident did legitimately turn Otto Octavius insane, before that point he was still on the edge because of how mistreated he was before then. And with that being said, you could still feel sorry for him. Now every villain has their own powers and abilities at their disposal, and Dr. Octopus is no slouch in that department, as Dr. Octopus has telepathic control over his tentacles, which not only has superhuman strength, but can also extend all four of the mechanical limbs. He also has high wind generation, in which can turn his claws into buzzsaws, he can climb on walls with his mechanical arms, and because of his connection with his harness, he is surprisingly very durable as well. Now as for his natural skills, Dr. Octopus does have genius level intellect, as well as leadership, Technopathy, Gadget Master, and surprisingly he is a skilled hand-to-hand -hand combatant, although not to the insane caliber like someone like Iron Fist or Daredevil. Now over the years, Dr. Octopus has achieved great feats. One of his more famous ones is of course forming the original Sinister Six, and over the years formed many other incarnations since then. He has also almost ruled or destroyed the world on multiple occasions, cheated death almost as much as the Joker at this point. Dr. Octopus's arms are strong enough to destroy Spider-Man's weapon, as well as being very durable enough to block bullets. His tentacles are so powerful in fact they are capable of stopping an ongoing train, as well as capable enough of destroying an armoured truck. And while Otto Octavius was blinded, he was capable of capturing Spider-Man without his own sight. He can also deflect a charge in Spider-Man while he was at full speed as well as being so strong they almost crushed Spider-Man's ribs at one point. He also crippled the owl and left him for dead. He also blocked many attacks from the Demo Goblin, who for all intents and purposes is the enhanced version of the Hobgoblin, is also able to quickly take down the Punisher with ease. Dr. Octopus has also beaten Daredevil in the past and left him to drown, outsmarted Iron Man and even destroyed his armor, which led to Tony Stark having another bottle once again, has won his fair share of battles with Spider-Man himself, has been able to beat the Hulk while using both his brain and brawn, Dr. Octopus is also capable of defeating the Sinister Six by himself, 
with all the members against him, successfully swapped his own body and mind with Peter Parker and became the superior Spider-Man, recently took the perfected clone of Spider-Man and became the superior Octopus, and ultimately has his own little army of Hydra agents at his disposal as well as being the commander of the Hydra Avengers. And like you could imagine, Dr. Octopus does have plenty of different incarnations over the years through other mediums, such as the 90s animated series incarnation for instance. And this version of Dr. Octopus is a fairly accurate interpretation of the character that we know from the comics. And you also have the Dr. Octopus from the Ultimate Comics, in which I don't really read too much of, so I can't really give fair judgement on this version. And of course we also have the Dr. Octopus who appeared in Spider-Man 2. And without a shadow of the doubt, he is probably the best villain we ever had in a Spider-Man film to date. As well as debatably the best version of Dr. Octopus we've ever had. Because he has the right balance of sympathetic as well as sinister. And you also have the spectacular Spider-Man's version of the character who is loosely an adaptation of the one that we know from Spider-Man 2, but with the sinister side of the character amped up to about 10. And I really like this version of Dr. Octopus. And of course you also have the version who appeared in the Ultimate Spider-Man animated series, who at the beginning was just... He was just awful. He was not threatening, he was not sympathetic, and just as a sign of him is just awful. But by the time the fourth season came around, he became more like the Dr. Octopus that we all know and love. And why we didn't have this version of Dr. Octopus at the very beginning was beyond me. And of course, I cannot leave out the stuff of many people's nightmares in their childhoods. The final boss of the PS1 Spider-Man game, Monster Ark himself. And even to this day, he is still kinda creepy, to his gruesome design, to even his horrifying voice. And he is such a memorable boss through fear factor alone. Hell, Monster Ark is so memorable in fact that even Ultimate Spider-Man decided to do their own spin on this mash between Carnage and Dr. Octopus. Now the reason why Dr. Octopus is such a fan favourite amongst comic book fans is the fact that he is both sinister and sympathetic at the same time. Sometimes he wants to help other people with his own twisted way, while other times he just wants to just kill people, and ultimately that just makes him unpredictable. But most times out of 10, his heart does seem to be in the right place. It's just unfortunate that he is very twisted because of his upbringing, as well as his life, being a complete mess. And ultimately, he just wants to be respected just like everyone else, purely because of his genius level intellect. And even when he tried to redeem himself as the superior Spider-Man, he just couldn't handle it. And this is because, unfortunately, Otto Octavius is beyond redemption. And because of his tragic upbringing, as well as interests and motivations and ideologies, as well as achieving many interesting feats, and being such a great adversary to Spider-Man, this is why I claim Dr. Octopus to be one of the best villains of all time. So are you a fan of Dr. Octopus and what is your favourite interpretation of the character? Comment below and share some thoughts. And as always, thank you guys for watching this video, please like and subscribe, take care and have a good one.